Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be going over how to create a photorealistic cinematic cutscene. Now this doesn't have to be photorealistic if that's not what you want, if that's not the styling of your game, however it is possible with this method which we're going to be using today. So as you can see on screen now I do have a cutscene which I've already created just to show it off what we're going to be making. Don't worry if this doesn't look too good, I have it's a little bit bouncy, it's a bit jittery. Don't worry, that's just because I've thrown this together fairly quickly. Obviously, the longer you take on it and the better you are at this, the better it's going to look. So creating smooth looking cinematic cutscenes is something which takes a little bit of getting used to and a little bit of skill. I'm personally not amazing at it because I don't spend a lot of time doing it, however I do know how to do it. So again, don't worry if this doesn't look too amazing, it's really just down to the person doing it of how good it's going to be. So this is what we're going to be going over and creating today, so without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually add in our cinematic camera. So if I should just go out of full screen here and make sure I put everything back on, I'm also then going to go to where I want this cinematic to start. So I just want to start it at the start of this tunnel here and just go over to the end there. And I should say as well, I'm using the uh, subway tunnel marketplace content for this and I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. So once I've gone to where I want this to start, what I'm going to do is go up to the add to the project at the top here, so it's kind of this icon here, press that, go down to cinematic and add a cine camera actor. Then just move this into the position that we want, so I want it to be roughly here and like this. What I've also done is I've toggled off snapping for the grid and angle, so moving and rotating, just so I can get a little bit more detailed with my positioning. Once we've got this, you can change all the settings which you want down here. Now this is where it's really useful to have a prior knowledge of cameras, photography, cinematography, all that great stuff. I've got a very basic knowledge, so I know kind of what these do, but also the default settings here do work perfectly as well, and that's what I used at the beginning of the video. After this, what we're going to do is go back to our add to project, go to cinematic again, and I'm going to be adding in a camera rig rail. And this will allow us just to create basically a spline, a rail in which this camera is going to be moving along, which really helps us to create a smoother looking camera movement. So this is very useful, especially if you're not too confident with the movement of the camera, this does really help. So I'm also going to put this into the starting position, which I want. So I want that to be around about here. I'm basically just going to be following the rails along throughout the tunnel. And I'm just going to place that, let's say here. Once we've got our camera and our rig rail where we want, what we're going to do is select our camera drag and drop it onto the rig rail in the outliner in the top right. So now it is parented to that. So if we select the rail and move it, the camera is now moving along it as well. Or moving along with it, sorry. Now if we select the camera, what we're going to do is change its location to 0 on the X, 0 on the Y, and about 50 or 60 on the Z. This then just puts it at the very beginning of the rail, so it's now on the rail perfectly where it should be, and also just slightly above it. You can obviously put it as zero on the Z if you want as well, but then it looks something like this, so you can maybe just bring it up to the position in which you want. So if you want it to be properly just on the rail like that, you can have it like this. Actually, I think I'm gonna do it like that as well. So for me, that is a value of 30. So I think that looks good, maybe 35, so I'm getting a bit into it now. So once you've got the positioning of this all set up, we can now actually start setting up where the camera is going to go for our cutscene. So this works the same way that splines would normally work. We're going to select the rail, then select the end point here, hold down left alt and drag out on the X. Now we're extending the rail outwards here. And if you were to just move the current position on rail from 0 to 1, you can see it's now moving along the rail like this. And in the bottom right you can see the preview of my camera also moving along it as well. So this is the base of what we're doing. Very simple, all we're going to do is just create this rig path with this rail path, sorry, the camera is going to follow along and that is going to be our cutscene. Nice and simple and easy to set up, but again, just takes a bit of getting used to to get used to the actual controls of it and to make it look nice. So what I'm going to do now is just spend some time actually creating this. So I'm going to move it out, move it along and rotate it to get a nicer turn. And if I select the end point of this as well, I can also move this to get more smooth turns as well. So again, just need to get used to it. So you can see here, this isn't going to look too good because it's going to go out and then back in and it's going to kind of snap a bit. So we just want to make this look a little bit nicer so we can do that. Obviously that's too close to the beginning there. 
so we can move this one about and obviously you just change it to get it looked good for you. Essentially this turn here is way too sharp so we just need to tone that down a bit to get it look a little bit nicer and smoother like this. And the more you do it the better you'll be at it as with anything really especially in Unreal. So we'll notice again this might need moving a little bit and what we can do is it doesn't just have to be left and right we can also go up and down as well. So if I select the endpoint, go out a little bit more, I can also go up like this if I wanted. Which again, I did that at the very beginning too. Didn't look too good for me, but again, that's because I did it quickly. Obviously you want to make sure it is nice and smooth going up as well, like so. So like I say, I'm just going to go ahead and create this rail. This is all I'm going to do for it, so I don't need to really show you anything else. What I will do probably is just speed this up so you do see me doing it. But again, I'm not going to talk over it as I've already gone over it all. So there's nothing else you really need to copy from this. But again, I'm going over to make sure there's no dips, there's no sharp turns or anything along those lines, just so it's going to look nice and smooth for me. So I think this is going to look good. So I've now got my very basic rail set up here. I think this is going to be good for me, so you'll notice this is what I've got. It basically just follows the path of the rail. It's not perfectly straight, so it is going to look slightly weird, but again, I'm just doing this very quickly for the purpose of the tutorial. So if we select the rail again, we can now look in the bottom right here and move the position on rail and see it's going to look like this. However, it's just facing forwards the whole time. It's not actually rotating with the path of the rail. So you'll notice when it goes around a corner, it stays looking like this. How can we fix this? Very simply pressing one button, right underneath it, lock orientation to rail, tick that, now it's going to actually follow the rail perfectly how it should. That to me feels like something which should be ticked by default anyway, but it's not, but no worries, I can see why you wouldn't want it on, and why you would, and in my specific case I do want it on. For you, maybe you don't. But this is what I've got here. So now how do we turn this into a playable cutscene that the player can watch? Very simply, what we're going to do is go back up to the three icons here near the add to project and this time we're going to click the one which looks like a cinematic kind of film movie uh, clipperboard. Then we're going to press add level sequence. Uh, don't worry about this new level sequence, that's just from earlier. What I'm going to do is name this one Subway Cinematic. That makes sense for me. And save this where you want. For me, I'm just going to put it in the content folder. And we're going to press save like so. Once you've done that, it should open up the sequencer tab at the bottom here for us to be able to actually edit our sequence. If this didn't show up, what you can do is select your subway cinematic and just press open level sequence here. So if I had to have this closed, you might have something like this. Just press open level sequence, very simply like this. Then in here, what we want to do is select our camera and rail like so. So select both of them by selecting one and holding control to select the other one as well. Then in our sequencer, we're going to hit plus track actor to sequence, add current selection, two actors, like so. Now we have them here. You might have this screen here where you're seeing what the camera is seeing. Don't worry about that. If you don't want it, that's perfectly understandable. I don't either, because we're not doing anything else with this. So you can just press the stop piloting an actor here. Basically, piloting an actor means when you move the camera, it's also moving that current actor. So that's very useful for creating cinematics as well. If you don't want to be using a rail like this, you can just use keyframes by piloting it as well. But I'm not going over that in today's video. Once we're in here, we're going to select the camera actor, scroll down to the bottom and hit a plus keyframe on the transform here. So now the transform of our camera is going to be the current transform we have here, which is perfectly what we want. Then we're going to go up and select our camera rig, add a track, and we want to press the current position on rail. So where it currently is, i.e. at the beginning. So this is going to be able to go from 0 to 1, like so, which again is just going along the rail as you normally would with a spline. So let me just reset that back to 0. Then we want to add a keyframe, so at the very beginning of the cutscene, it's at the very beginning of the rail. That makes sense. Then all we need to do is just go to the end of the rail at the end of the cutscene. So across the whole timeline of the cutscene, it's going to be just travelling along the rail. So now at the moment, this is currently 165 or 150 frames long. So what's that in seconds? Well, it's 30 frames a second, so you can do the maths to work out yourself if you want to. Or, something a lot easier, press to 30 FPS, 
go to show time as and press seconds. So you notice this is five seconds long. I want my cutscene to be a lot longer than that, especially because of the length of this. That's going to be traveling very quickly. So I'm going to hold control and zoom out. And I'm going to change the working range end from 9 to let's say 30. So it's going to be going for 30 seconds. Then I'm going to continue zooming out till I reach the 30 mark here. And I'm just going to drag my cutscene all the way out to 30 like so. So now it's going to be going for 30 seconds as you can see here. Then also move the red line so that's where it actually ends. Move that out to 30 as well. Then once you've got the length of the timeline which you want, so how long your cutscene is going to be, we can move our kind of pointer all the way to the end, and this is just where we currently are in the cutscene. Move it to 30, and then change the current position on rail to 1, so it's at the end, and add a keyframe like so. So now it's going to be going from 0 to 1 across the length of our cutscene, as you can see here. And that is all we need to do. It is very, very simple. So I'm going to hit Control S to save this and then close the sequencer so I can get back my full screen like this. And again, this might not look too amazing because of how quickly I've done it, but you get the idea, it's going to work regardless. And if we were to select our cinematic again, so I named mine Subway Cinematic, uh, you can see that we do have quite a lot of different options here under playback. So you can take autoplay, you can have it loop, change how quickly it's going to play, see if it's going to start at a random point, all of these different options here you can use. You can even blur in. Now I'm not going to change any of these because I don't really want to, but obviously it's very simple to do that if you did want to. So now we've set up where our cutscene is going to go and actually created the cutscene, but now how do we actually play it? So there are different ways of playing it. So you can do it when the player walks somewhere, just when the game begins, or anything along those lines. For me, I'm going to do it as soon as the game starts, so as soon as I load up the game I'm playing this cutscene. However, the same method I'm doing here will apply anywhere else, you just move the code there. And I am going to go over that as well. So for me, again, I want it at the beginning of the level. So what we're going to do is select our sequence actor here, so for me that's Subway Cinematic Level Sequence Actor. Then I'm going to open up the Level Blueprint. So go to List of World Blueprints, Open Level Blueprint here. Then I'm going to get Event Begin Play by holding down P and left clicking. Right click get create a reference to subway cinematic and out of this simply just get play from the sequence player like so connecting that into event begin play there very simply like that this here is all you need to do so the selected nodes I have i.e. everything except begin play you just place that where you want the code to start so maybe the player walks through a door so they walk into a box collision or they enter a certain level so when the level opens like I've got here anything on those lines you just place this code here nice and simple now to get a reference to the subway cinematic you do need to be in the level blueprint so what you can do is use a custom event here instead of event begin play place that into the play and then you can use event dispatches to actually call this now I do have a video on event dispatches and how to use them and I'll leave a link to that in the description down below as that is a nice and efficient way to essentially cast to the level blueprint because obviously that is not available by default. So I'm going to hit compile and save and close this then I'm going to hit play and test this out. So if I hit play here you'll notice that we've now got our cutscene. So it's now going along the rail as you can see here going up and down left and right a little bit bumpy but again that's because I did it fairly quickly. But you can see this is working. This is also moving a little quick as well that's just because of the length of the timeline which I chose. But I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do today. What we've done is we've set up a cinematic cutscene in which what we've done is set up where it's going to go, created the cutscene and we've also created it so it's going to play how and where we want it to. So thanks so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.